fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Presents by special recording, The Lone Ranger. When the weather's bad, do you and your friends ever hang around the house wondering what to do? I'll bet it happens lots. Well, you know where you can have the most fun? In the kitchen, with a package of the new Betty Crocker brownie mix. That's right. It's easy as can be to bake up a big batch of luscious chocolatey brownies with Betty Crocker brownie mix. Everything you need is right in the package. Just add one egg if you like the chewy, fudgy kind of brownies. And two eggs if you want them soft and tender like cake. Add nuts, too, if you like. Either way, Betty Crocker brownies are the G.I. can't eat them fast enough kind. Even if you've never baked before, you'll turn out scrumptious, chocolatey, perfect brownies the very first time. And what fun you and your gang will have eating brownies that you bake yourselves. Have Mom get Betty Crocker brownie mix next time she shops. Then invite your friends over for some fun. With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Away! Dan Reed, 14-year-old nephew of the Lone Ranger, left the general store in Newville and went to the hitch rack where his horse, Victor, was waiting. Easy, Victor. Steady, boy. As Dan stood putting his packages into the saddlebags, two boys, one about 15 and huskily built, and the other about Dan's size and age, walked over and stood watching him. The older boy gave a sneering laugh as he spoke to his companion. <laughs> It don't seem right for a mama's boy like him to have a fine horse like that, does it, Ray? That's right, Gr Gil. Bet he'd get a licking if he mussed up those neat clothes of his. You know, I'd like to take a ride on that stallion. You could wait here while I rode him to the edge of town and back, kid. Nobody rides this horse but me. <laughs> Steady, Victor. Easy, boy. Steady. Why, you fresh pumpkin. Get off that horse. Man alive. You sure pulled out of that saddle quick, Gil. I wasn't looking for a fight, but you seem to want one. I'll break you in two, pretty boy. <laughs> oh, no, you won't. <laughs> yeah, I'll fix you for that. Give it to him, Gil. Don't let that little coyote show you up. You'll be sorry he was so fresh. Maybe not. <laughs> Hey, the little fellow will get hurt. Hey, but that's not the point. Wait, you know, the smaller one's too all right. You're just being lucky there, so. I'll show you. This person isn't just luck. Oh, oh. man alive, he knows you big down. That strange kid can sure fight. Hey, I've had enough. Someday I'll get even. You wait and see. I'll be ready. Let's get away from here, Ray. <laughs> you sure can handle your fish, youngster. Thanks. I did my best, sir. <laughs> well, it did me good to see that Gil Biggs get a licking from somebody he tried to pick on. He's a hard hitter. Yes, and an unfair one, too. You better keep your eyes open from now on. All right, sir. I'll be on my guard. Easy, boy. Sir. <laughs> Bye, sir. Goodbye, son, and lots of luck. Come on, Victor. <laughs> left town and rode to the camp he shared with a lone ranger and Toto in the hills outside of Newville. Hi, Dan. Hello, Tano. Oh, you look like maybe you have trouble. I was forced into a fight with a boy in town. His name is Gil Biggs. Gil Biggs, huh? I know of him. He's quite a bit larger than you are. 
Well, I was able to take care of myself, though. Oh, well, that's good, Dan. When he was leaving with a friend of his, another boy about my size, Gil said he'd get even with me. One of the men in town told me to watch out for him, that he'll cause me trouble. He's that type, Dan. You know, in a way, I feel sorry for that boy. Well, why, sir? Because his father was an outlaw and was shot while trying to escape a posse after a stage holdup. Golly. Yes, that was about three years ago. The son, Gil, has been living with an aunt who has very little use for him and pays little attention to what he does from all I've heard. Isn't that right? The aunt has continually told the boy he'd be no good like his outlaw father. I'd say she's driving him in that direction. You sure I awful me. Yes, I know. And you will have to keep your eyes open. He'll try to get back at you for the beating you gave him. I'll be careful, sir. Meanwhile, in town, Gil Biggs left his companion and went to the small place near the edge of town where he lived with his aunt, Flora Biggs. Gil? Gil? Yes, Aunt Flora? You wait right there. I want to talk to you. Oh, now what? I got plenty of work around this place for you to do, but you're too lazy to even earn your keep. I'm almost old enough to earn my living outside. Then I'll be able to pay you. Don't you talk back to me. The idea of coming in here all dirty and bruised and all, fighting and running around with roughnecks and getting into trouble is all you're good for. You wind up just like your father did. You mark my word. All right, maybe I'll end up that way. And maybe it'll be sooner than you think, too. Why, well, of all the sets... Well, you don't... won't have to put up with it any longer. <laughs> like you said, it's about time I went to make my own way. And that's just what I'm going to do right now. Later that afternoon, Gil met his friend Ray near the livery stable and told Ray of his decision to leave home. You can't be an outlaw without a gun, Gil. I got one of Dad's old guns in, in the bundle there. Put on the gun belt after I leave town so the sheriff won't take it away from me. That fresh kid rode out the West Trail earlier today. I'm going to get my horse now and head out that way. And when I meet up with him next time, he's sure going to be sorry. Late that afternoon, the Lone Ranger and Toto prepared to leave the camp. Steady, Silver. There, that pinch is tight enough. Well, me ready to leave, Kimasabi. All right, Tonto. Dan, we won't be gone long. We'll ride toward town to see if we can get any news of the Baker gang. They're known to be in this territory. I might take a ride up the trail that goes along the railroad tracks. The train is doing a little while. And <laughs> Dan still likes to watch the train go by. Yes, most boys do, Tonto. Well, be back at camp before dark, Dan. Yes, sir. Adios. Bye. Easy, Easy fella. Oh, A few minutes after the Lone Ranger and Toto left camp, Dan Reed mounted his horse, Victor, and rode toward the trail that ran along the railroad. Meantime, Gil Biggs had ridden past the branch trail that went to the camp. Gil rode along slowly with his eyes on the tracks below. Suddenly, he saw a group of men in the cut, piling logs across the tracks. Gil drew off to the side of the trail hurriedly and dismounted. Oh, 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 oh. Leaving his horse in a clump of trees, Gil moved cautiously on foot to the edge of the bluff and looked down. He must be out, though. Going to hold up the train. Maybe I could get to join him and... Oh, someone coming along the tree. You'll be coming over the top of the hill in a minute. I'll go hide with my horse. Crouching beside his horse in the clump of trees and well shielded by bushes, Gil watched tensely. Suddenly, the rider came into view. Holy smoke. The kid on the white horse that licked me that day. As Dan Reed approached, Gil Biggs took the gun from the gun belt he had put on after leaving town. Then he moved quickly out into the trail, where he stood facing Dan with a gun in his hand. I'll put him up, you, and stop your horse. Oh, 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 oh. Gil Biggs. You recognize me, huh? Get on. Make it quick. 
guess I have to. Easy, boy. Steady. Hi. Hey. Some men are in the cut down there. You forget them. I'll lead your horse into the trees over there. Hurry up. Come on, Victor. Come on. Yeah, this is good enough. Easy, Steady. Look. Those might be outlaws down there. They might wreck the train. They're outlaws, all right. Now, I reckon they'll hold up the train, too. But we've got to do something. <laughs> I'm going to do something, all right. I'm going to take you down here in the cut and tell them my coach is fine on me. And I'm going to ask them to let me join up with them. You're going to join a gang of outlaws? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. When they find out I kept you from going for the law, they'll be glad to let me join. Now, lead your horse. And get going to the path that goes into the cut. If you make any move to get away, I'll use this gun on you. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's one of the half that these people have to pay. Weedies, are weedies, and do, 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 and okay. Okay. Sure enough, take Midwestern champions, for instance. When Bobby Feller takes the mound, the outfield boys sit on the ground. That Wheaties pitching leaves them there, watching batters fan the air. And when we name our Wheaties crew, Big Ted Klazuski's in there, too. He'll face those hurlers day or night and knock their fastballs out of sight. Bob Feller and Ted Klazuski both know that Wheaties magic. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be doo-doo-doo and okay. Okay. to continue. Just after Gil Biggs discovered the outlaws in the railroad cut, Dan Reed rode along the trail. Gil took Dan by surprise just as Dan saw the outlaws. And laughing at Dan's urgent suggestion that something be done, Gil said he was going to take Dan to the outlaws, tell him he'd captured Dan while he was on his way to get the law, and then asked to join them. He forced Dan at the point of a gun to lead Victor down a path into the cut. Mounting his own horse, Gil followed close behind as they reached the cup, the outlaws saw them and covered them with guns as they approached the group. Hey, it's a couple of cheers. One holding a gun on the other. Hold, 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 Victor, hold on, hold. Now just what are you buttons doing here? What's the idea of one of you holding a gun on the other? I caught this sneak up there in the bluff spying on you. He was going to go for the law. Yeah, for the law? He was, was he? What's your story, kid? I would have gone for the sheriff if he hadn't stopped me. <laughs> hey, listen to the maverick. He's got funk. Yeah, that's right, Curly. But I can't figure this out yet. What's the big boy up to, I'd like to know, Tex? Yeah. What's your name, Button? Uh, Gil. Gil Biggs. Well, what are you up to? Why'd you bring this kid down here? I got a score to settle with him for one thing. And I decided if I turn him over to you, you... Let me join up with you. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to that, will you? He wants to play outlaw. Yeah. <laughs> that hey, gun. hey, wait a minute. Gun away, I'm please. beginning to remember something. What? I've seen that taller kid in Newville. His old man was Blackie Biggs who tried to double-cross us with the law when Bill and me were riding with a Martin gang. Hey, 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 hey wait a minute. Hey. You mean to say Shut that... up. What are we going to do with these kids, Tex? Well, what do you want to do with them? Haven't any time to waste. Well, let's take them back among the boulders and give them each a bullet. Now, wait a minute, Curly. I don't go for shooting a couple of kids. That's out. Oh, well, yeah, you're the boss. If that's the way you feel about it. But we can use those horses, especially that white one. We'll keep the horses all right. You and Bill take the kids and tie them up. We can leave them over behind the boulders. They'll be found after the hold up when they can't do any harm. <laughs> Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Toto had ridden toward Newville. The masked man waited on the edge of town while Toto went to get the news. In a short time, Toto returned. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Easy, Scott, easy, fella. What did you find out, Toto? Well, from me here, young fella, a friend of Gil, 
say Gil ride out West Trail. Say him hope to find Dan. We didn't meet him on the main trail. He must have passed the turn off to the camp before we came out. And that's right. Wait a minute. Dan said he was going for a ride toward the railroad. If Gil's up that way, they might meet. Mm, that's not good. We'll go up that way right now. And the quicker, the better. Here, Silver. <laughs> Anything might happen. Let's hurry. Steady, we come up. Come on. Come on. Back in the railroad cut, the outlaws had finished putting the pile of logs across the tracks. Curly and Bill tied Dan Reed and Gil Biggs, then took them across the cut to some other boulders where they were hidden from view. Curly spoke as he finished tying the boy's feet. Yeah, that'll hold him. You know, Bill, I hate to leave this big button to be found later and get away. You know, I I hated this old man. And I had a score that was never settled with him. The young coyote is his son. Oh. What you plan to do, Curly? We'll stay here behind these boulders until the train shows. When the others start shooting, we'll do the same. But the first two shots we make will put bullets into these two fresh mavericks. The two boys were propped with their backs against a big boulder facing the bluff with their hands and feet tied. In a few minutes, Curly and Bill, the two outlaws, moved a short distance away so they could have a clear view of the railroad tracks in the cut. Gil spoke to Dan in a whisper. I'm scared, Dan. They're going to shoot us. We might get out of this somehow, Gil. I'm trying something while they're not looking. What are you doing? <laughs> Don't look at me and stay quiet. Gil, it worked. My hands are free. Well, I'm not looking this way. I'll untie my feet. If you get away, I'll be killed here alone. <laughs> my feet are free. Now I'll loosen your cords. Be careful in case they decide to look over here to make sure we're secure. You mean you're going to help me after what I... Quiet. (laughs) Get your hands free. Now, a minute. One of them's looking over here. What's going on here? We... Hey, the little button's got his cords loose. I'll finish them both right now. Get out of my way. As Curly stood right in front of them, Dan trot fast. At the same time, he saw the Lone Ranger and Tonto appear up on the edge of the bluff. As Curly went for his gun, Dan threw himself forward. Hey, don't shoot him! Grabbing Curly's knees, pointing his aim at Gil as the gun went off. Dan's tackle forced Curly to drop to the ground. His gun fell in front of Gil, whose hands were free. Quickly, Gil grabbed the gun and shot at Bill, who had started to draw. Oh! Now, you dirty little snake, I'll beat the life out of you for that. Hold it, I'll plug you. Better, better watch it, Curly. He means it. He plugged my arm. Oh, Bill! Hey, Tex and the other two are corners. So are you two, so you better not move. Take the gun, Dan. Keep him covered. All right. I'll untie the cords on my ankle. From where he stood, Dan could see the lone ranger and Tonto going into action against the other outlaws. For a few minutes, the fight waxed hot and heavy. Then he heard one of the outlaws yell in pain. That was Tex. The masked man plugged him. In another couple of minutes, the other two were forced to give up. And shortly after, the lone ranger and Tonto hurried on foot to where Dan and Gil waited with Curly and Bill. Dan, are you all right? Oh, he sure is all right, mister. I don't say we're the mask, but you must be Dan's friend. You and the Indian. We are. We'll tie up these two. The others are already tied. Let's hurry, Tonto. We'll have to throw those logs off the track before the train comes. Quickly, Curly and Bill were tied securely. Then, taking Dan and Gil with them, the lone ranger and Tonto hurried to the railroad tracks. And the four of them went to work moving the pile of logs. We'll have to hurry. These are heavy and there's several more. Uh, train coming now. Come in to cut us. Help me with this one, Gil. Sure. It was a race against time. But as the train whistled once more and showed at the entrance to the cut, the last log was dragged off to the side. We got them off just in time. Yeah. Yeah, that was fast work. Dan, you saw the train pass as you wanted to, but you went through a lot before you did. Oh, golly, I sure did, sir. Two outlaws up near us were going to shoot killing me. Dan got loose, and then he helped me. He saved us. Let's go over there now where Todd and I left the other three. Look, he brought the kid back with him. Your man Curly was planning to shoot us up there behind those other boulders. 
He said he hated my dad and was going to settle an old score by killing me. Uh, this mask on is rounding up outlaws like he seems to be doing. Better take you to the law, too. You're aiming to hit the owl who trails soon as you're old enough. No, I'm not. I changed my mind. Even if my father... My father was an outlaw. Yeah, yeah. From what Curly told us, your father, Blackie Biggs, changed his mind, too. Before he pulled a job with the gang. Sure, but they wouldn't let him leave. Then he double-crossed the gang with the law. Is that true? I heard Biggs was shot by a posse. No. No, Curly says one of the men in the gang shot him when the posse was coming after him. Word got around that Biggs was shot by the posse, but it wasn't true. Might have got a pardon if he'd have lived. Gosh. I guess Dad knew he'd made a mistake that... Just like I knew I had. Oh. And you not want to be outlaw now? Oh, gosh, no. I'm going to be a lawman someday, like Dan says he is. Well, that's fine, Gil. I think you've learned your lesson. Oh, yes, sir, I did. And Dan taught it to me. Gosh, if I had friends like you, I guess maybe I'd be lots different. We are your friends, Gil. I think you'll make a fine lawman when you're old enough. Now we got the horses. Then, Connor and I will take these crooks to the sheriff. Oh, Dan, you can take Gil to our camp for the time being. Come, Toto. we got these men on their horses. Uh-huh. Oh, come on, Gil. Our horses are right over there. Yeah. Dan, I guess I ought to tell you I'm sorry about this morning. Wanting to ride your horse and all. Oh, that's all right. After we get back to camp, you can ride him if you want to. Oh, gosh, thanks. <laughs> Victor's glad to see me. Yeah, he sure is. Let's mount now. Steady, boy. <laughs> Yeah, I can't get over all this. You and that masked man, the Indian, and and the fine horses you have and all. We're lucky they found us when they did. There they go. Dan, look, before we go, tell me, who is that masked friend of yours? You should say friend of ours, Gil. He's the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to The Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.